Thank you, Dr. Brooks. It's a pleasure to be here today, and I appreciate your attention. We're going to talk about um, pregnant patients and, and what to expect in, in dealing with laparoscopy with them. I have nothing to disclose. Overall, surgeons, when they're treating pregnant women, have to really consider two patients. You have to think both about the mother and, and the fetus. Unfortunately, it's our fear of harming the fetus that often leads us to try and delay surgery and avoid surgery, when in reality, we're more likely to harm both the mother and the fetus by not dealing with them promptly. So kudos to those of you who are here today and listening in to prepare yourself for that emergency that comes in a pregnant woman. How often do we see it? Unfortunately, pretty often. It's estimated that anywhere from one to 500 to 630 pregnancies are going to result in the need for a non-obstetric surgical intervention. To help you in this process, SAGES has carefully developed a set of guidelines to, to make you more comfortable addressing these patients laparos in, with laparoscopy. The first guidelines came out in 1996, and they've been updated twice with the most recent guidelines consisting of 23 well-thought-out, well-planned guidelines and 185 references. SAGES took the time to review the quality of each study in there, and the guidelines are then rated by their strength and their quality. And of the 23 guidelines, 15 of them are moderate and strong, meaning they're based on large numbers but case series. The most important of these, I think, is guideline number eight, which says that laparoscopic treatment of acute abdominal disease has the same indication in both the pregnant and the non-pregnant patient. So the approach to the patient, whether it's by laparotomy or laparoscopy, should be based on the comfort and skill of the surgeon and access to the appropriate resources, including OB colleagues. Why are we operating on these patients? Some of them are GYN related. Many of these adnexal masses, uh, ovarian torsions, ovarian cysts are gonna be managed by our GYN colleagues. But the non-pregnancy related diseases are overwhelmed by appendicitis and, and biliary tract disease. Trauma, tumors, uh, splenic artery aneurysms all can play a role in it, but the, the two big ones are appendicitis and, and biliary disease, and we have speakers that are gonna address those two most common things today. Uh, SAGES also went through each of those diagnoses, went through the most common ones, and, and gave you a list of the operations that can be done safely. Not included in that is that there are some laparoscopic procedures that should not be attempted in the pregnant woman. Ovarian uterine tumors are not laparoscopic cases, nor should pelvic lymph node dissection be done in the pregnant patient. The benefits of laparoscopy are very similar to our non-pregnant patients, with a few add addendums. There's less manipulation of the uterus in a laparoscopic procedure than, than open, and this can result in less irritant uter uh, uterine irritability, less preterm labor, lower premature delivery rates, and spontaneous abortions. Laparoscopy has been shown to have a decreased risk of thromboembolic events compared to our open operations. And there's actually, uh, in some diagnoses, unknown diagnoses, you may have better visualization laparoscopically than if you attempted it open. Some people have even been brave enough to do this single port, single port cholecystectomy, appendectomy, and treatment of adnexal pathology have all been reported in the pregnant patient. Our risks are really related to that preterm labor, the risk of labor going on to preterm delivery, and then fetal morbidity and mortality. But these risks exist whether you do it open, whether you do it laparoscopically, and even if you don't operate. So operate. 12% of patients who have symptomatic cholelithiasis that are observed will go on to spontaneous abortion. And that rate gets really high, 60%, if they go on to get gallstone pancreatitis. So some of these patients who have symptomatic gallstones that you don't operate on that go on to get pancreatitis are gonna do way worse than if you had done that uncomplicated cholecystectomy with a 5% loss rate. The safety data in, in operating uh, laparoscopically on pregnant women is overwhelming in case-based series. There is not randomized prospective studies on that, and many people would consider it unethical to do that kind of study. There are database studies that do show an increased risk of fetal loss, 
but there are much fewer studies that show loss rate than, than, than open. And the one that's specifically large dealing with laparoscopic appendectomy will be dealt with by one of our later speakers. Um, in general, preterm labor and delivery is lower in laparoscopy than in open in most series reported, and it's lower if you deal with uncomplicated disease early on than if you try and delay things and are dealing with complicated disease. The fetal loss rate is at roughly 5%, reported anywhere from 1.5% to 8%, and with rare exceptions, it's pretty equal whether you're doing the operation open or laparoscopic. As to safety to the baby themselves, there are no differences between open and laparoscopic surgery with respect to birth weight, APGAR scores, growth restriction, infant mortality, or fetal malformation in any of the studies out there. When do we operate? It can be done in any trimester of pregnancy. This is a notable change you need to make compared to in previous years. The original guidelines wanted you to do this in second trimester. We no longer recommend that. The reason we originally said the second trimester is because we were looking at open surgery and comparing spontaneous abortion rates, which are high in the first trimester, and preterm labor rates in the, in the third trimester. But when you went on and collected that additional data looking at laparoscopy, there was no increased risk based on trimester. There was a very large Swedish registry of over 5,000 Swedish patients who were operated on during pregnancy, and they showed you can safely operate in any trimester. So whenever mom needs surgery is when you should be doing your operation. There is also a misconception that laparoscopy cannot be done in the third trimester due to space considerations. This has not been borne out. There are many reports of safe laparoscopy late in the trimester, as late as 35 weeks gestation. But you do need to move your trocar sites and you do need to use lower pressures to protect mom and baby. It's okay in that third trimester to start out laparoscopically and if you get outside your comfort zone, convert to open. Everyone has concerns that they're gonna cause teratogenic effects in baby with both surgery and medications. There is no evidence to support that surgery is teratogenic. All medications are gonna have some theoretic fetal risk. Specifically, there is no anesthetic agent that has been shown clinically teratogenic in concentrations in normal pregnant women. You can safely use them, you can safely give them pain medication postoperatively. Everything comes with a risk-benefit ratio, and when in doubt, consult your OB colleagues for input. As far as fetal safety, the biggest risk of, of operating on a pregnant mom is the risk of insufficient uteroplacental blood flow to the fetus. The, your, you and your anesthesiologist be, need to be very conscious of oxygen and perfusion levels and avoid hypercarbia. In animal models, if the CO2 goes up, they can risk fetal acidosis, which could theoretically result in an increased risk, risk of fetal loss. However, there's a very nice study with continuous evaluation under ultrasound of laparoscopy in pregnant women. It showed no decrease in uteroplacental perfusion. There was a decrease in fetal heart rate throughout the case in every patient done, but they stayed in normal ranges, and there were no complications to the infants related to that. So it can be done safely. As far as mom, mom can also safely undergo anesthesia. There are a number of physiologic changes that need to be considered at the time of the anesthesia. Specifically, their airways can be more difficult because of change in position, edema, and vascularity. But they do show a decreased need for anesthetic agents during the case because of these changes. We still need lots of data in order to give you better information. Randomized prospective trials would be ideal, but are unlikely to be done. So we're looking for those larger case series that are gonna directly compare open and laparoscopic surgery. And we also need additional long and short-term data on the babies and the mothers who've had laparoscopic surgery during pregnancy, particularly those who were born premature. As you get nervous thinking about that fetus, also keep in mind that our OB colleagues and pediatric surgery colleagues sometimes do fetoscopic surgery. They go directly, mom is the conduit, they're going directly in and looking at the baby and intervening as well. So it can be done. Overall, we know that based on the knowledge we have so far, laparoscopy is safe for both the mother and the fetus. Delaying surgical intervention is more likely to lead to problems with preterm labor and fetal loss than the intervention itself. And we still need additional data to improve the quality and strength of laparoscopy in, in pregnancy. Thank you.